Well, good morning. It's so lovely to be with you. Uh, obviously, I'd love to be with you in person, um, but that day uh, is still to come. Uh, just praying God's blessing on you. Um, today, I'd like to share with you something that we've been talking about now um, within Southern Counties Baptist Association for uh, quite a few weeks. Uh, we've been encouraging our churches um, to think and reflect on these questions. In fact, Dan and I attended um, a meeting, a Zoom meeting, uh, with uh, quite a lot of people just a few weeks back to consider these questions. So let me just read them to you. What might God be inviting us to notice at this time? What insights and practical responses arise from what we notice? In responding to what seems to be of God, what is needed and from whom? And my prayer is that, that over the coming weeks and months uh, that you might be able to take some time out to reflect uh, on these questions. Uh, but what I'd like to do today is just to uh, give some feedback on that conversation that we had as an association some weeks back um, and some of the comments and some of the themes that came out of those reflections. Well, as you can imagine, quite a lot of thoughts uh, came through. There were a number of strands. Um, but what I'd like to uh, mention this morning uh, is an area that particularly touched uh, me. And, uh, and what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just share with you uh, some, some of the quotes, uh, direct quotes uh, from, from the day. Somebody said, uh, we need to do things differently when we get the other side of this pandemic. I don't want to go back to business as usual. Another said, a willingness to stand against simply returning to normal. We need to slow down and reflect on what has gone and to reflect on what will now be. Uh, ju just one more. We must find ways to get a better balance. Covid has allowed time to spend with God. We need to focus on balance but also on priority. We need to be more like Mary and less like Martha. The reference to Mary and Martha really struck a chord with me. And so I'd like to read uh, those verses from Luke. Luke chapter 10, uh, verse 38. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken from her. And it was those six words of Jesus, Mary has chosen what is better, that has just stuck with me. And I want us to reflect uh, on uh, that sentiment uh, this morning. Mary has chosen what is better. Let me give you another quote uh, from that day. We've been too concerned with all that we feel we have to get done. What is God asking us to stop? start and sustain. God is inviting us to notice him more. I've appreciated the different pace and rhythms that lockdown has meant for me. I felt God just wanting to connect with me and me with God, but with no agenda other than just to be. I just love that. Mary has chosen what is better. I'm not quite sure what life looks like for you at the moment, but as we prepare to come out of lockdown and to uh, reboot church, I wonder what that's going to look like for you as a fellowship, but also for you as an individual. And I wonder what we'll have learnt uh, in these weeks uh, that have gone by. What might God be inviting us to notice at this time? I think a number of us might say it's a time to realign our priorities, 
to exchange what is good for what is better. A time perhaps to really listen, to recalibrate, reboot, whatever language we want to be able to use, but to connect with God in a real and a vital way. As you know, there are two kinds of people. There are those who like lists and those that don't. I'm a list sort of person. I have lists for all kinds of things. Um, we've had a number of garden projects, like a lot of you have, uh, over these past few weeks, and I've been going through it one line uh, at a time. Uh, I do love lists. And I remember uh, on one occasion, uh, I was running through a list of priorities with God in prayer, uh, and I was sharing with him about all these plans that I was preparing. And uh, as we talked together, I just sensed him saying to me, Dave, I, I love your plans. I, I love what you're thinking of doing. But would you like to hear my plans? <laughs> Those were awkward moments. As I gulped and I thought, oh my goodness, I've spent weeks, months planning these various things. Uh, what am I going to tell the deacons? What am I going to tell? What am I going to tell the people who were part of those plans? I was planning for a sabbatical and the idea was that I was going to go off to Asia. Uh, and I'm sure it would have been a really important time in my life as I learnt from people in a different context. Uh, and, I, and I saw and witnessed the way that they, they shared the gospel of Jesus uh, in a different part of the world. Uh, I was so looking forward to it. And it was on my list. <laughs> but God said, uh, I have other plans. Do, do you want to hear them? <laughs> and of course, I, I said, of course I do, Lord. I, I, and I could feel myself metaphorically getting my pen out to start another list. And so it went something like this. OK, Dave, uh, what I'd like you to do on sabbatical, instead of going off to Asia, I'd just like you to, and I'm starting to write down, I'd like you to sit at my feet. I've got that, Lord, sit at my feet. And I'm waiting for the second line. But there was silence. And so, so I said to God, OK, Lord, I've got that. You want me to sit at your feet, but what else? He said, that's it. He said, I just want you to be with me. I don't want you to ask me for anything. <laughs> and I won't ask anything of you, actually. I just sense that. He said, I just want us to hang out together. Well, it was, it was quite incredible. I, I thought, well, how am I going to share this with my deacons? <laughs> I shared it with the deacons and, and the only one really that was happy was the treasurer because <laughs> the costs had gone down significantly. So I planned to spend some time up on a Welsh hillside um, and this is going back uh, about 10 years ago now. And I just need to share with you that in, in many ways, um, as other people looked in on what was happening there, I, I don't think I accomplished very much. Uh, there were no great things done. But I need to share with you that those weeks that I had sitting with God were transformative. Uh, my life has not been the same since. My, my relationship with, uh, with Jesus uh, grew exponentially. I, I guess what I'm, I'm saying is that you can't microwave spirituality. It takes time. So I came back uh, from that sabbatical and, uh, and I, shared, I shared with my leaders and I, I, I served some great deacons and they listened intently to what I had to share with them about this encountering with God and I, I'm, I'm a little embarrassed to say this but I'll, I'll share it. They asked me, what did God say to you? I said, I, I never heard him say a thing. But actually, that was OK. It, it wasn't so much about what he said or what I said to him. It was about being. 
And I, sh I shared with them that I, I just felt in my spirit that this great privilege that I had been experiencing uh, on sabbatical uh, was a gift that I felt the Lord wanted to give the deacons. And uh, they were quite excited about that because they wanted me to write to their employees to give them three months off. <laughs> but of course that didn't work. But what I meant was that perhaps we need to list, lay down our lists and our agendas and our plans from our deacons meetings and just sit with God together during that time. Well, they said that they would think about it and pray about it, and, uh, and that's what they did. They went away, and I think about two or three weeks later, they came back together, because I asked them to weigh it, because, uh, you know, all, all of us have got faulty antenna. We don't, we don't hear perfectly. So I asked them to go and share, and so, and so that they, they went away and sat with God, and they came back, and that they, they too felt that it was right for us to lay down our agendas, and I just want to say to you that that is just so countercultural for me. I am a list and agenda person. The whole thing about leadership and planning and organizing, I've celebrated that for years. I, I, I so respect good leadership. And, and the other thing that you need to know is that for, for years, as we've been working together with that church, we had been prioritizing growing younger families within the life of the church. And we had invested in so many ways, time, people resource, all manner of thing. And we kept hitting our head up against a brick wall and uh, nothing really seemed to be changing, even though we had all these great plans. And so for the first week we met and prayed uh, and for the next week and then for the next week. And this went on for about six months. And, and I remember at one point they said to me, Dave, how long are we to do this? And I said, I don't know. I, all I know is that the Lord wants us to do it. I'm not sure how long for. Well, the remarkable thing is, is that during that period, family started to appear. Um, we didn't know where they came from half the time. They would just appear. Uh, and we were in a church that was so isolated that you had to be lost to find us, if you know what I mean. And yet they rocked up. And not did they just rock up, they actually joined the church. And uh, we saw this remarkable season of growth as people came to know Jesus. And what had changed was that we were seeking God as our number one priority. Mary has chosen uh, what is uh, better. I think one of the things that I need to um, just highlight uh, to you uh, at this point was that it wasn't all sweetness and roses we started to get some stick from some of the people in church. In fact, we were being accused of neglecting our duties, of actually becoming lazy in our responsibilities. And I, I just thought about these verses uh, that we've just read uh, from Martha. Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. She's being lazy. She hasn't got the plan. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. I'd like to take you to another passage now, if I may, in Acts. I've been reading this passage during Pentecost, and um, it struck me again. It struck me as a leader, uh, but it also took me back to this story just 10 years ago uh, in my leadership in Cardiff. And in Acts 6, it says, In those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. And this proposal pleased the whole group. So the word of God spread, the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient uh, to uh, the faith. 
Well, why have I gone to that passage? Because, do you know, I think my default is, is that if I'd been faced with that problem, the first thing I would have done is roll up my sleeves and actually said, right, we've got to sort this out. And I would have been part of that practical expression of sorting it out. But the apostles chose not to do that. Now, what am I saying? I'm not saying that we don't have a responsibility to the community and to the poor. Of course we do. We know that. Uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan is a, is a perfect example about how Jesus requires us to have faith that has legs and hands, that our mouths actually um, speak, yes, but actually our, our words are followed up by action. Of course we get that. But what I'm talking about here is I wonder sometimes in our rush to meet the needs that we see in our community or even the practical needs that we see within our fellowship that we have missed what is better. And that is to spend time seeking the face of Jesus, the one who put the stars into the universe, the one who ha owns all the cattle on a thousand hills, the one who has all of the resources that we will ever need. And I wonder if sometimes we give up what is best for what is good. Mary chose what is better and it will not be taken uh, from her. I like the way that the message puts this. One thing only is essential and Mary has chosen it. It's the main course and it won't be taken from her. Uh, well, I don't know how you feel about this, but I, I'm, I'm stirred and I'm challenged by uh, this thought again about our primary calling be, uh, to be followers of Jesus and worshippers of his. And everything that comes out of that comes from lives that are soaked in the person of Jesus. <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to get so filthy. My mum used to say to me, David, I want you to go to the bath and I want you to soak for an hour. Why did she say that? Because she knew <laughs> that it needed to take time. I wonder sometimes if we feel we can microwave our walk with God. I think sometimes we can get away with that, but I wonder what we miss out on. And so I guess the challenge uh, for you and for me today as we come to God's Word again is what are we going to choose as we come out of lockdown and start to think again in the autumn about church what's that going to look like for us? Is it going to look the same? Or are there going to be differences? Only one thing is needed Mary has chosen what is better I'd like to finish uh, with uh, this prayer from uh, Tozer, uh, a hero of mine. Lord, I'd like to devote the remaining years of my life and ministry to the holy task of cultivating God. Help me to know you first, and then out of the overflow of that growing knowledge can come whatever ministry you choose to bless me with. And God's people said, Amen. Thank you so much.